Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this we're getting to the comp video. We're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the RTX 2080 Ti, specifically a leaked benchmark, well, a supposed one anyway, that is doing the rounds on internets. So what type of performance are we seeing with the RTX 2080 Ti versus the GTX 1080 Ti. Well, according to this uh, image that has been posted on the internet, we are looking at a 35% jump from Pascal to Turing. So this image was actually posted on videocards.com's Twitter, and we can see that the score is 12,825 points. Now, to put that into some level of context, the standard GTX 1080 Ti will score around the 9400 to 9600, maybe 9700 range. This, of course, does depend on the manufacturer, the clock speed you're getting, overclocking, the temperature of your case for boosting, and so on and so on. So let's say the 9300 at the very low end, if your case is really hot, to perhaps 9700 if you're using a really good card, uh, you've uh, been overclocking perhaps with water and so on and so on. So once again, you're looking at around the 30 to possibly 40%. So let's take the average of that and say 35% jump from one generation to the other. Now, some people are going to say, well, that's not that big of an increase, but there are several factors we need to take into consideration. The first is according to videocards.com, he was emailed, the chap that runs the website, why cry with emailed this particular image. And he cannot verify that it is actually a real image. In other words, he cannot verify that it was really an RTX 2080 tie. After all, there are multiple ways to fake these things. The second thing is, let's suppose it really is an RTX 2080 Ti, right? Well, what does that actually mean? Because the state of the drivers right now is questionable. And uh, to say questionable, it's being rather kind. Now that's not a slight on Nvidia's part. We are talking about a card that ultimately has not been released. You can't say, well, this product hasn't been released, it's getting this performance. Similarly with the ray tracing, for example, with Battlefield, or to be honest, any game, even if it's a console exclusive, if the title has not been released, you can't necessarily say that optimizations are in yet. So it's possible that it is a very early driver. And also, where is the source from this? So, for example, it could be a uh, preview from an AIB. Perhaps they got a specific part. Perhaps a part has fallen off the back of a lorry, if you know what I mean. Perhaps uh, NVIDIA themselves are doing a little bit of PR marketing. After all, it does build hype. I doubt that one, but it's always possible. You never know, right? Another possibility is perhaps a reviewer has got their cards early. We do know that some people have had their cards shipped and possibly they just did this because, well, it builds excitement and so on and so on. Who ultimately knows whether it's legit? Now, my personal opinion is 35%, however, does roughly hit the performance metrics that we're hearing from NVIDIA themselves. I did mention just recently that there was a couple of interviews that has taken place from NVIDIA and they've said around 35 to 45% increase from the 1080 Ti to the 2080 Ti. And whether that's worth it to you, we're gonna have a whole discussion of that in the not too distant future um, because I do want a few more uh, things to settle before I give my opinions on this. But ultimately, this is like a Halo product, right? <laughs> And, you know, it, whether it's worth it or not to you is down to your discretion. This card to me is very much like the Titan. It doesn't necessarily represent the highest value uh, to consumers, but still it is the fastest single card that we can probably get. In my opinion, it's most likely gonna beat out, let's say the Titan V, which is a bloody impressive card. No two, no two ways about it. But then again, it is 3,000 US dollars. We've also seen a whole bunch of things from NVIDIA with the LSS, of course, which we've done uh, a rather in-depth analysis on. We've also seen things, of course, with the whole uh, situation regarding ray tracing and so on and so on. And even when these products do launch, there's probably still optimization left in the tank. But as it stands right now, my personal opinion is we're probably going to be looking at around 35% on the low end, assuming that Turing is not being fully utilized with a specific instruction set, which really helps benefit it. So in other words, asynchronous shaders really seem to be something that have improved with Turing. We're also seeing, of course, DirectX 12 titles seem to be better favored and so on and so on. Ultimately, right now, I'm gonna say that the cards are probably gonna have, once again, around a 35 to 45% jump. 
but it's going to be interesting to see how optimizations really affect things and if final driver revisions are going to add an extra 5 or 10%. And it is very possible that this might be the case. Now let's move over to a different GPU, and that is from HMVU themselves. The company have confirmed that 7NM Vega is indeed coming this year, but there are a couple of other rumors that I wanted to tackle in this very video because they are rather interesting, and that is putting it mildly. So, just so everyone's clear, 7NM Vega is not for gamers. This card, from what we can understand, is for deep learning, it is for data centers, it is for professionals and for prosumers. I'm going to read out a press quote from AMD. AMD's next, AMD's next major milestone is the introduction of our upcoming 7NM product portfolio, including the initial products of our second generation Zen 2 CPU core and the new Navi architecture. We've already taped out multiple 7NM products at TSMC, including our first 7NM GPU planned to launch later this year and our first 7NM server CPU we plan to launch in 2019. Our work with TSMC on the 7NM node has gone very well and I look forward to providing more details on these innovations as we prepare to introduce the industry's first 7NM GPU this year and our first 7NM CPUs next year. So of course 7NM CPUs represent, as I just mentioned, Zen 2. Now this is really important, it's going to debut on the server market first, which of course means Epic. Epic, uh, the second generation, will be backwardsy compatible with the current uh, Epic uh, motherboards and is looking to be excellent of value from AMD. And we do know that uh, Zen 2 has a plethora of tweaks, including but not limited to higher clock speeds, better IPC, perhaps more processor cores, in fact almost certainly more processor cores, and so on and so on and so on. But the main crux of this video is, of course, Vega. Now the reason I'm bringing Vega into the question is a couple of very interesting rumours, and this concerns the performance of Vega. Now there's a rumour that's going around that Vega uh, 7nm has a performance of 20.9 tflops. That's actually pretty darn staggering. To put that into some level of context, you're looking at around 13, 13 and a half tflops with Vega 64. And so you're immediately going to say, well, gosh, what the heck have AMD done to drastically improve performance so much from one generation of Vega to the other? Now, here's the thing. If we were to do a little bit of maths, I'm going to uh, do this on my phone because I'm going to cheat and we'll pop it up on screen as well. So if you have 4096 shaders, he says typing in 4093 by accident, that is the number of shaders that of course fall inside the Vega 64 because we have 64 um, shaders per compute unit, the 64 compute units in Vega 64, hence the name 64. You get the idea. So. If you times that by two, which is two instructions per blah, then, <laughs> technical term, then you have 8,192. And then, my friends, you would times that by whatever uh, frequency. In this case, the boost frequency of the uh, liquid is 1,677. So let's do that very same thing, 1,677, which means we have 13.737. And that means that, yep, those are the biggers that AMD tell us. Okay, well, let's reverse that, shall we? So, we have uh, to type in 21. There we go, 21 million. And now, let's do the reverse. So, 4,096, we're going to divide it by, and then we're going to divide it one more time. That means that we have a clock speed. I'm not quite sure about this, but I don't think AMD are going to be able to achieve this, even on a 7NM node. Maybe I'm wrong of 2,563. Hmm. So there's a couple of theories that we have here. The first is that the 20.9 is complete rubbish. That's certainly a good possibility. Another theory is that we are looking at a dual Vega part. Now AMD, to be clear, are indeed releasing a dual Vega 56. In fact, well, we've seen it, but perhaps they're also doing the same thing for 7NM. Another possibility is that they're upping the number of shaders inside of Vega 7NM. They haven't specifically said it has 64 compute units and 64 shaders per CU. For all we know, they've increased the number of shaders per CU to 96, or perhaps they've increased it to, I don't know, 
uh, 80 compute units, or perhaps they've done 72, or I, I don't know, I'm just throwing out numbers. Another possibility is that the figure that they are touting includes other things which are intrinsic to deep learning, or possibly some other tweaks in the architecture itself. Ultimately, we don't 100% know. But to put this into another perspective, it does actually beat out the performance, at least in terms of uh, FP32, if we're looking at the pure shader arithmetic. So this is not including things such as tensor cores of Turing. Hmm. So at least on paper, if we are assuming that these figures are accurate, and we're assuming that no other funny business is going on from AMD, this is not including, I don't know, some dude in the corner with a calculator helping the GPU perform maths or something. Uh, no, don't call me AMD to do that. I don't want to. I'm good with a calculator, but it seems a lot of work. Um, yeah, so that is pretty impressive. It also makes me confuse, actually, what we could be seeing from Navi, because there were the whole rumors that uh, you might recall that they were started by Forbes, that Navi is going to be like a mid-range GPU. Well, okay, well, what does mid-range actually mean? The rumors were that that was going to put out roughly the performance of a GTX 1080 to 1080 time, maybe a little bit faster. Is that a load of bollocks? <laughs> Technical term. So does that actually mean instead it's going to be mid-range for AMD's products, but in actuality they've got a lot more coming forward. So perhaps it will be mid-range in that, yes, it's going to put out the performance of, let's say, the 1080 Ti, but they also have a lot more products coming. Who knows, ultimately? It's a bit of a question. And in my opinion, it's going to be fascinating the next 12 months. The only fawn in AMD's side, and I'm pretty sure most of you can probably agree, that currently, of course, Turing is produced on, well, 12 and M. We all know that. It's... Not inconceivable, and by not inconceivable, I mean it's pretty bloody obvious that NVIDIA will most likely release either a sh refresh of Turing on 7nm, or they're going to tweak the architecture, have essentially Turing 2.0, whatever you want to call that. And that will, of course, feature higher clock speeds, most likely larger numbers of, of, uh, of uh, CUDA cores. I was about to say shaders there, or stream processors, and NVIDIA probably would have reached across the screen and slapped me. And... Ultimately, it's most likely that there are going to be some other tweaks as well. Almost certainly, we're going to see a bump in ray tracing performance. How? Well, it's possible that it might just increase the number of, um, of uh, SMs on the entire GPU. Or it's possible they could just add a second um, tensor, sorry, not tensor core, ray tracing core per SM. But... Who knows? It's going to be a really cool year, and I'm bloody looking forward to it. I think that these next 12 to 24 months, when you factor in Intel as well, are going to be incredible for PC gaming. And another really cool factor as well is, of course, the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox. And yes, you might groan and say, well, who cares? It's an Xbox. It's a PlayStation. I'm running on a PC. Yeah, but ultimately, next generation of consoles does have some impact on us as PC gamers. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, well, you know what to do, and that's subscribe and click the bell icon. Click it. You haven't clicked it yet? There you go. And also click the like button, the share button, the give Paul hugs over the internet button. That's a good button as well. <laughs> but with all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.